Hey everyone, it's Monsi. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my videos. Today I'm going to be filming part two, part two, to the creepy, strange, and unusual encounters. And before I get started, I just want to say thank you guys so much for 14 subscribers. Ever since I made the video, I've actually had people commenting and asking, is that, like, did that get you so scared that you don't want to show your face? Well, no, I don't want to show my face just yet, but I will eventually, maybe when I get a few more subscribers. But with the amount of subscribers we're getting, I'm probably definitely gonna make the face reveal anytime soon. <laughs> but let's get started. Okay, so this first one happened my s back in my sophomore year. Yeah, my sophomore year. And it actually happened at the same house that I saw the man in underpants. It from my last video, which if you haven't seen it, I, I'll try and link it down below in the description. But it's this house that's basically basically like walking distance from my house. You could probably get there like in less than five minutes. And I would actually walk, walk in front of that house in order to get to school every morning. And like for my first story, that basically there had been this man in underpants up in his underpants outside like in the afternoons, but I would pay no attention to him and one day he tried making conversation with me. I ran away from him and my parents were mad at me for not telling them. A teacher at school had told me, you know, why I didn't call the police and I don't know, I didn't know it was illegal. And um, so basically I'd been walking in front of that house for, so, for like nearly the entire year. And then uh, one day I was walking past that house and the creepy part is I get this really this phone call and I answer it it's from the number literally from the number like 666 or 0 star 666 I remember it had at least two or three sixes in it which is a creepy part and I don't know why I answered I did hear like a creepy noise coming from it and I guess once the man realized I was distracted with the phone he decides to scare me because he's actually hiding like behind a tree or in a plant and then makes a scary noise. I I got scared and I just like freeze in the moment, and I scream like ah like ah like I scream twice, and I just stand there like a deer in the headlights like not moving with a scared face. And he just laughs like ha 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 like in an evil laugh. And like I just stand there for like another second and eventually just run away from him. And I did tell a friend later that same day, like once I got to school and she's like, okay, do you want to go tell the teacher? Do you want to go whatever? Like, and I'm like, no, thanks. I don't want, I don't want to be sitting in a police station for like an, for hours. I told my parents when I got home and my mom did end up complaining to the owners of the house. They said that they were going to keep the lights, the outdoor lights on just so this won't happen again. And I think it was, and after that, my parents would, like, walk me to school, which is, a uh, I mean, it's in high school, but hey, they wanted to keep me safe. And one day, this girl, we're going to call her Courtney, she was actually walking past the house, and my dad's like, hey, why don't you walk with Courtney today? Courtney! And Courtney's like, oh, hey, look, come on, let's walk together. And Courtney and I started talking, and then she tells me that she ends up walking to school earlier that day because now that there was daylight, because this was after daylight savings, and uh, she tells me about this weird guy that she would pass by this house and this weird guy would literally just chase her with like a chainsaw or a machete. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that's so scary. I'm sorry that happened to you. And she tells me that she told her mom and because her mom is friends with the police officer that the police officer said something to the owners and then the guy wasn't allowed to live there anymore so he had to move out. And the creepy part is it was the same guy, same house. Like she showed me where the house is and she describes the guy. And same guy, same house. What do you know? Eerie. Okay, and the second story has to do with the f with my last and final story. But, uh, okay, this happened. Most of you guys will, will know what Kmart is. I think it's still around in some states, but here in Florida where I live, it's been long gone since like 2015. 
and this happened well when Kmart was closing down and I really need, needed to get some shoes and some jewelry and uh okay so my parents and I decided to split up I mean I wasn't decided to split up I was gonna go get look at some shoes and then went to go look at some shirts and as we split up these two men in these two Spanish men end up getting close to me and then they're like isn't that the girl from that one morning like no se sé si la niña de ese mañana si sí, si sí, es mirale la cara yes yes that is look at her face and the men start chasing me around the entire store like I'll go into a into like a an aisle and then they'll follow me into that aisle or I would go into some section and they'll follow me into that section when I realized they were following me I like, I'm looking for an employee. I'm like, okay, if there's an employee here, I'll tell them those guys are following me. And because they were closing, not many people were working in Kmart at that point. And uh, so I'm looking for an employee. But now I'm like, if I can find a police officer in here, even better. But no, nothing. I get to the shoe section, and I see this just random woman uh, looking at the shoes. So I get close to her, and I'm like, hey, girl, what's up? You looking for shoes, too? Oh, that's so cool. You find any pairs you like? The woman's literally looking at me like, who the heck are you? I, I don't even know you. And why are you talking to me? Like, the woman never even bothered making conversation back, which was uh, awkward. But anything to get those guys to stop following me. When they realize that I'm talking to someone and that I'm with someone else, the men, like, they had a one of those carts that has, like, a broken wheel and it gets stuck. So they literally just leave the cart as it is and start running away. Like, they're making a they're making a scene. You can it's obvious if you see two men running around in the store, that they're up to no good. Eventually, I'm like, oh, sorry, I thought you were someone else, and I walk away from her, and I found my parents in in like the shoe section. I mean, in the clothes section, which was near the the shoe section, and I'm like, these two guys were following me. And they're like, my parents had actually seen the men running by, and I'm like, I think it was the two guys from that morning. They said, you know, isn't that the girl from that morning? Ellos dijeron, no se sabe la niña de esa mañana. Y les vi la cara, pero que me estaban siguiendo. Like, I was looking for an employee and, you know, I explained everything to them. And all we did was literally was just pay for what we got and, and left. And I never saw or heard from the men again. But uh, it was a little freaky. Or it was really freaky. I'm just glad that they left eventually. And, uh, wow, look at that, I'm losing my breath, I'm getting hysterical. And now to the first story, and this is the freakiest of these, of all these. I'm glad I'm still okay. I get hysterical when I tell this, but I'm gonna get started anyway. Okay, so this was when I was, uh, this happened in 2015. And it did happen af after, before that situation, before that situation. Okay, see, it happened before, and, uh, yeah, you see what I mean, and, uh, I was walking to school, and I left my house, like, three minutes later, and those three minutes made a huge difference, in a bad way. Okay, so my dad's like, you know, come on, walk to school already, you don't want to be late. And so I left my house at 6.18 that morning, and I was walking outside that previous house that I mentioned at but the house has nothing to do with this at this point and I noticed this before the, I even got to that house I saw this car speeding off like in the distance like away from me I, di I didn't think anything of it and then by the time I was at that house my dad saw this white car speed by like a street near the house he thought nothing of it and then he saw the car stop but he thought that they had stopped only to pick somebody up so he said nothing of it. And by the time the car got behind me, they're driving really, really slowly, like, like this. Like, and it became obvious that they were following me. And I'm thinking, this is creepy. I started trying to walk faster. And they're trying to, like, you know, f drive at my pace. The car stops, but it was at a stop sign, so I think nothing of it. But I'm like, and when they stop, I make eye contact with the guy. He backs his face slowly away, and they had all their lights off. Like, you know, the light for the license plate, all their car lights off. 
And I did find that a little bit suspicious, but I thought they were horrible drivers or whatever. And, like, the fact that, again, the car wasn't moving, but it was a stop sign. So once I passed the stop sign, I start walking a little bit faster. And that's when, like, the car passes the stop sign at a curve. And uh, so they're following me again, and I'm thinking, something's wrong here. Suddenly, like, the man opens up the... Well, he cuts me off like I'm walking here, and then when the car cuts you off, the man gets out of the car. Oh, God, here's the freaky part in it. Yeah, like, okay, we're struggling there. Like, I see his shadow on top of mine. I know the guy was definitely taller. He was Hispanic. And uh, it, it was like this for basically a good uh, maybe one or two minutes. It felt like it happened in slow motion, but it um, it happened so fast, but it felt like it was happening in slow motion. And... Like, eventually, thankfully, the guy did end up letting me go, and he runs back, he gets back in the car, slams the door, and then they just speed off. I didn't tell anyone about this until, like, December of 2015, and I definitely told them before, like, my last story happened during my winter break, and I definitely told people before my winter break, so, like, weeks before the second story happened, but, uh, and people were like, you know, Okay, why didn't you call the police? Why didn't you report it to the sheriff's office? You know, you don't know if those men actually got away with another child. Like, you get, you guys get what I mean, right? Like, they could have, technically, they did attempt to kidnap me. And, um, like, you know, they, they attempted to kidnap me. They could have gotten away with someone else. I doubt they did, though, and I don't know if I'd be alive. And, uh... Yeah, I'm getting hysterical. Sorry about that. I'm getting really hysterical. So I, I actually kept my mouth shut about it. So, um, yeah. So, so I did keep my mouth shut about it until December, and people were like, you know, why didn't you call 911? And, you know, like, those men belong in jail. Thank goodness they didn't hurt you. But that's just where I'm going to end the video. Like I said, thank you guys so much for 14 subscribers. If you like this video, please give it a like. And the reason I didn't want to make that last story into its own personal video, which I feel like it should have. But uh, there are a bunch of girls who make videos like that. And there are way too many videos about I almost got kidnapped. Most of them are clickbait, which I hate. So that's why I didn't make a video of, like it. That's why I didn't make it into its own video. But I hope you guys uh, enjoyed. And I'm perfectly fine, don't worry. But I hope you guys liked the video. Please give it a like. And please subscribe. And thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Stay safe. Bye.